High walls surround the convent of the Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in style in the Netherlands. 22 women live here in strict seclusion. Talking to them is only possible through a grill. Bars which separate worlds. When groups to us come or individual people, they shrink first. Yeah, why is here a gitter back? When groups come to us, they are frightened off at first by the grill. What does that mean? At first, that can be a painful experience, not so much for the sister, but for the family. The sisters find their lives fulfillment. They're looking for their lives fulfillment here. While for their families, it means the sacrifice of no longer having their daughter, their sister in their midst. Seven times a day, the nuns gather to prayer. But they don't just pray in a formal way. Their whole life needs to be one long conversation with God. The whole day should be sustained by prayer. We have to differentiate between our prescribed prayer life as a community of believers, that's the liturgy of the hours, and celebrations of communion. In addition, there's the personal prayer of adoration, and every sister has an additional hour set aside for prayer, reading, etc. Prayer becomes more and more a prayer of the heart, often totally without words, just a silent being before God. Non-stop prayer. Nowhere is that clearer than in the perpetual adoration. Throughout the day, throughout the night, a sister is kneeling before the monstrance. This chain of prayer is never to be broken. It's not easy to get out of bed in the middle of the night in order to go before the Holy of Holies, to enter into a dialogue with God. Nevertheless, the sisters hold firm to this church practice of prayer. We call ourselves the servants of the Holy Spirit of perpetual adoration. That means that there's always one sister praying, but that also means that I retain an attitude of perpetual adoration, always, even asleep, but God's always present. Like in a marriage, where the husband's even there when you're peeling potatoes. So God's there for me. When I'm practised in it, that I can now say I'm also praying somewhere when I'm not praying. As much as prayer gives the day a structure, it's only part of the daily life of the sisters. Between times of common prayer, they do their daily work. But even their activity is marked by inwardness and silence. Initially, remaining silent is a discipline. So sometimes you can speak, sometimes not. But staying silent has to be internalised as a value. If you've recognised and embraced this value, you never want to let it go. A friendly word is allowed between one another during the day, but no long conversations or telling each other stories. For that, there is the common recreation period or the hour of free time or on Sundays when there's more time allocated for speaking. It's a balance between staying silent and speaking. Oder die Stunde der Freizeit oder an Sonntagen, wenn mehr Zeit zum Sprechen gegeben ist. Es ist eine Balance ja, zwischen Schweigen und Sprechen. Wir müssen 
auf den Herrn schauen, auf Jesus. We have to look to the Lord, to Jesus. He sacrificed himself for humanity. We want to be one with him. That means sacrifice, the self-dying. It means doing what the Lord wants from every one of us. To those for whom it is a calling, it brings fulfillment. Those who are not called can't do it. The time of testing lasts three years. Then the novice receives the pink habit of the sisters. The sisters have been making it themselves since 1896. For the unusual color for a habit, the sisters can thank their founder. After Arnold Janssen had already founded a male and a female missionary order, he was particularly concerned to call into being, as a third congregation, the Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. Arnold Janssen was a man of prayer. Arnold Jensen was a man of prayer who prayed a lot himself and also encouraged others to do likewise, and who was convinced that the fruitfulness of a missionary depended on prayer. And that's why he was so concerned to found a community that would support the mission with never-ending prayer. The sisters worship service in the early morning. As much as the sisters are tied to this place, as much as their lives play out in the same never-changing surroundings, with their thoughts they're outside, there where human beings suffer, struggle with their daily lives, there where missionaries at their side are championing a better world. 10,000 men and women belong to the Styler family of orders, sisters, brothers and fathers, who are striving on five continents to give ever more shape and form to the Lord's kingdom. Wherever they may be, they can rely on the prayer of the approximately 400 sisters of perpetual adoration worldwide. The sisters' prayer is intended to help and support others. Thousands write letters to the sisters, asking the nuns to pray for them. The sisters see that, too, as a challenge. We answer every letter, try to promise that we'll pray, give encouragement, stimulate their spiritual lives, help them to pray. Many also write that they would love to pray but believe they can't, that they need the help and the knowledge that someone is praying with them. I think that by our existence, by our way of life, above all by the worship, we bear witness that God is there, that he is the reality with which everything has to be in line, to which everything has to adapt. Our co-founder, Mother Maria Michelle, lived according to the guiding principles she gave us. Silently change before God, work joyfully for God. Assess everything according to God. Debate everything with God. Burn up with passion for God. Have a childlike joy of God. Find a deep peace in God. For me, these guiding principles 
sum up our whole way of life. Für mich fasst dieser Leitgedanke einfach unser Leben auch zusammen, unsere ganze Lebensweise.